Hi everybody. Uh, today I want to take a little bit of time and I want to talk about a subject that is near and dear to my heart. If you follow my videos or you watch them even on any kind of regular basis at all, uh, you will know that I'm pretty keen on testing my water uh, in as many different ways as I can and in, you know, basically as many different scenarios and circumstances as I can just to find out what's going on with what. So today I want to actually just talk about water testing in general. And the reason I'm doing this video is I actually did some testing and I shot some segments and sequences of video on a little experiment I was running. And the results came out to be pretty anticlimactic. Um, I got no change whatsoever in the results. And I'll tell you what the experiment was very briefly. The tank we're looking at uh, is positioned directly in front of my CO2 sniffer where I get my measurements for what my atmospheric levels of CO2 are in this room. So yesterday afternoon they had gotten all the way up to 1800 parts per million because I had been burning um, a hurricane lamp down here and then the weather suddenly got nice and I was able to open the window and turn the fan on and I evacuated all the CO2 and dropped it down to 400 parts per million in about 20 minutes and I took a um, pH test and a carbonate hardness test and I just sort of took some water parameters that I know uh, will change based on CO2 levels given enough time um, but the weather didn't stay nice very long and the house got closed back up and by four or five hours later the CO2 levels were back up over a thousand parts per million, uh, etc, etc. So the following morning when I did my second follow-up test of the pH, nothing had changed and the pH was pretty much exactly the same as it was on my initial test. Now that's not to say that didn't accomplish anything. Um, you know, an experiment is an experiment, and a result is a result. That's not to say I didn't learn something from that result. What I learned was that under those circumstances, my pH doesn't fluctuate. It doesn't make for great video, but it does teach me something, and it does give me more information about how my tanks work and what goes on in my tanks. And that's what got me thinking about this, you know, video, just talking about testing in general. Um... You know, I know it sounds cliche, I've said it before, but we are water keepers, we're not fish keepers. And you can't know what's going on with your water by looking at it. You know, I just, I hear that all the time from people. They say their water's fine, and whenever I hear somebody tell me their water's okay, I always follow up with... You know, I ask for some details. I ask for some numbers. I ask what type of test kit they used. I ask for something specific other than my water's fine. And surprisingly, I will often get the response that, oh, I don't have a test kit. Everything just looks okay. Um, you know, that, that just astonishes me when I hear that. I mean, the, the, the people that are saying this know that you can't see ammonia. They know you can't see the tank's pH, and yet they still tell me everything looks okay with their water. And you simply cannot do that. You have to test your water. Uh, if you want to know what the pH is in your tank, you have to do a pH test. If you want to know how many nitrates are in your tank, you have to test it. You cannot just look at your tank and tell that. Now, the reason I'm so keen on testing water is because I just like to know how things work. I just have an insatiable curiosity. Uh, that's why I love this hobby. It's something that I will just never cease learning from. Uh, there's, there's a virtually unlimited amount of different animals that I can learn about, etc., etc. This, this hobby to me is just brain food. I love it. And so I tinker a lot. I do a lot of little experiments like the one I just mentioned, just to better my knowledge and understanding of what's going on in a tank. Now, I appreciate not everybody is like that, and not everybody's going to do that. So for the person that's looking for the, I just want to have a pretty fish tank sitting on my desk or, you know, in my office, so in the afternoon I have something to relax and look at, um, that's great, but if you want your fish to be healthy, if you want your plants to do well, if you just want your tank to run smoothly, you have to know what's going on in your tank. And what's going on in your tank effectively is what's going on with your water because everything in your tank, including your fish, very much your fish in fact, more or less become the water they're in. You know, the, the pH in your fish's blood is the same pH as the water. Uh, the, the total dissolved solids that are in the water have an absolutely direct impact on the total dissolved solids that are inside the cells of your animals. So these things that I test for are not 
things that I test for just because I'm curious. There are certain things you need to test for that are very important just for the proper maintenance and running of an aquarium, uh, even if you're talking about simply keeping your algae under control, talking about whether you're learning how much is too much to feed your fish. You need to check for your organics to find out are you blowing your organics up, is there not enough. You, just, you, you have to test. You simply cannot look at your tank and find these things out. So we are going to go over and look at my test station very briefly. And while I have an awful lot of stuff we can go through and look at, uh, I want to point out just one or two basic things that I feel that everybody really should have uh, when it comes to some basic test equipment. So let's go over there and have a look at what I've got. Alright everybody, this is not everything that I have and I don't feel that it's necessary for this video to go into all the different testing equipment that I have. Um, this is some basic stuff that I recommend everybody should get. Uh, this is a total dissolved solids meter and this is the one thing you could probably skip if you were going to skip anything here. I do recommend getting one if you can. If not, it's not that important and we'll discuss a little bit further about why all of these different tests are important. This is probably familiar to everybody. This is your API master test kit. It tests for nitrates, nitrites, and ammonia, which are the key elements to your nitrogen cycle, so you can make sure everything is working properly with that. It also gives you a high and low range pH test, so you can test your pH as well. That's very important. This is the other piece of equipment that seldom gets purchased, but I always recommend and I think is very important, and that is your general hardness and your carbonate hardness test kit. Uh, it does not cost very much money, and it is very, very important information uh, you need to know and as far as what's going on in your aquarium and the health of your animals. So let's go back over, and we will look at a different tank for a few minutes, and we will discuss in a little more detail why each and every one of these specific test items is so important. So here we are at my T-bar tank. I have actually just thrown some uh, sinking shrimp pellets in the bottom, so if you'll notice that sort of cave structure right there in the middle, uh, there's a chance that we might get to see my black ghost knife fish uh, make an appearance while we are finishing up discussing the various test items we just looked at. Now the ammonia and the nitrite and the nitrate test kit are pretty much a, a must-have for anybody. Those are the most nuts and bolts things you can possibly have uh, to test on your tank. They are the most basic, fundamental, foundational tests you need to be able to do to determine the basic foundational health of your tank. Everything in your tank depends on your nitrogen cycle working properly and the only way you can tell, well there's two, uh, two ways you can tell. You can tell when your fish start dying or you can test your water. Um, that, you know, again, you just cannot see whether your nitrogen cycle is working properly. If you're going to go by something like whether or not the water seems cloudy, you know, again, are you going to wait till you can visibly see an issue? You've waited way too long if you can actually see when something is going wrong with your tank. And a lot of times, cloudy water or green water may not be anything that's necessarily to be concerned about. So again, you simply just cannot look at your water and tell. I'm probably going to say that a hundred more times before this video is over. So having your foundational tests is a must-have, I think. I just, I, I can't imagine not having the capacity to test my tanks for ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate. Again, just the most basic of tests that you should, everybody should have, at least the dip test. Again, don't really recommend the dip test. Uh, if you're going to test your tanks on any kind of regular basis, and if you've got more than one tank, you will go through those dip tests very quickly. So all in all, it's still just a good idea to get that master test kit. And I'm not particular to any brand or anything. The only reason I recommend the one I recommend is simply because it's very common, it's a complete test, and you can get it anywhere for a fairly small amount of money, which I'll get into in a moment as well. But included in the test is your pH test. So the pH goes a little beyond what is your simple nuts and bolts foundational type testing and allows you to start expanding your repertoire of knowledge of what's going on in your tank. By understanding your pH and being able to test for your pH, you can actually determine a lot of other things that may be shifting and changing within your tank. If you notice your pH is dropping or rising, you can then start deducing based on other aspects of your tank why is it falling? Why is it rising? Um, 
That brings me to the carbonate hardness and the general hardness test kit. Uh, they come together as one kit. It costs, I don't know, maybe $15 or something like that. Uh, my friends across the pond might pay 20 pounds. I know it's a little more expensive over there, um, but well worth it. And what having the, the ability to test your hardness gives you is it gives you the ability to start correlating numbers. You can look at your general hardness and you can look at your pH and now you can start understanding how one affects the other and why this one shifting changes that one and so on and so forth. If you look at your carbonate hardness and you can compare that with your pH, that can give you a rough idea of how much um, dissolved um, carbon dioxide you have in your water. It, the, 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 the carbonate hardness is your tank's alkalinity. It is your tank's buffering capacity. So being able to measure your carbonate hardness allows you to measure your tank's buffering capacity. If you have water that is supposed to be a pH of say 8.4 and you want it to stay there, well you need a fairly high buffering capacity to keep a, a pH that high and if you check your carbonate hardness you may find that you already have enough buffering capacity. You don't need to do anything else to it. So for people that have to adjust their water, for people that have the African cichlids and they need to make their water nice and hard, uh, I know there's some very simple guidelines of how much um, you know, potassium sulfate and calcium carbonate you want to put in the water. But I've used this analogy before and I call it my cake analogy and I know people laugh when they hear me say that, but if you're baking a cake you have a certain recipe that you're supposed to follow and I think of the water in my tank as the same way. There's a recipe I have to follow. I have to have X amount of this dissolved solid, I have to have X amount of that dissolved solid, I need my pH to be right here, I need my, you know, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. There's, there's a, a recipe for your water. So if you're making a cake and you need all these various white powdery ingredients like a certain amount of flour, a certain amount of salt, a certain amount of sugar and so on and so forth and you take your mixing bowl and there's already an undetermined amount of stuff in there are you going to just go ahead and add your two cups of flour on top of an unknown amount of flour or are you going to try to either, you got two choices, you can either determine how much flour is in the bowl already or you can dump it out and start with nothing and build from ground up. Now obviously that's the way you want to do it if you can and that involves just using some RO or some RODI water and then building your water up from nothing. For most of us however we're going to be using our tap water and we're going to be adding to that. So how do you know how much to add if you don't know what's already in it? And how do you know what's already in it if you don't have a test kit? You can't do this stuff without testing your water. As far as people that just say, okay, I add two tablespoons of this and two teaspoons of that, you know, I don't have those kind of fish. I don't keep African cichlids myself. I'm assuming that once you get up to a certain level of hardness and so on, you're pretty much good and they can withstand it as long as you're somewhere in the ballpark. Um, so it may not be that critical. I don't know. But I also feel... I'm just passionately curious about everything. I like to know how everything works and the only way you can figure out how things work is by testing them. And I'll get into the total dissolved solids meter a little bit with that. That's one of those tests that sort of gives you a generalized number that you need a lot of other information to understand what that number means. And it's, you know, it's just a number. A high number is not a good number or a bad number. It all depends on your circumstances, what kind of fish you have, what you, recipe you of water you're going for. If you've got African cichlids again, I'm sure you have a very high number of total dissolved solids, but that's what you want in that circumstance. If you're keeping discus, you, not so much. You know, you don't want very many dissolved solids in your water. But that's just a number of the total amount of stuff that's in your water. But it's another number, it's another piece of information that fits together with your tank that helps the greater understanding of how it all works together. Because your water in your tank as I've said before, is the most important thing in your tank. Your fish more or less become the water they're in. And how do you know what they're in if you can't test for it? It's just, uh, you know, I say that over and over and over again because I'm fascinated by this 
you know, this response I get by so many people saying that, oh, everything looks fine. And oh, my fish, my fish are swimming around okay. And I just, I really don't understand how people aren't just nervous all the time wondering what's going on in their tank. I hate not knowing what's going on in, in my tank. I hate mysterious deaths. You know, I have a fish that rolls over dead. I generally know the cause nowadays, you know, but it's because of a lot of digging and a lot of checking these numbers and a lot of tinkering and a lot of experimenting, and I appreciate not everybody's going to do that. I just saw my black ghost stick his little face out there for a moment. Um, but you should at least be able to check on the, the, the general well-being and basic upkeep and maintenance of your tank in terms of being able to simply check to see if there's any ammonia building up. Now, I don't check all my tanks every day to see if there's any ammonia building up. I don't check every day. I don't even check at every water change to see uh, how much ammonia is building up. I honestly don't check at every water change, um, you know, what my nitrates are and all that. I mean, you guys see that on the video all the time. But I don't shoot video on every single water change I do, and I don't run the full array of tests whenever, you know, like you see in my videos or whatever. I'm not that crazy about doing testing, but I do test frequently, and I do test, and this is the important time to test, and I can't stress this enough either. When you've made any changes in your tank at all, you need to start testing for a little while after that. If you've really given the tank a good cleaning, if you've added fish, if you've removed fish, um, if you've put a new filter on it, if you've done anything to the filter, if you've cleaned your filter or changed out, you know, again, not maybe a simple padding change or something like that, but if you've really gone in there and done something, you really need to start keeping an eye on your tank because those are the kind of things that will disrupt your nitrogen cycle. And the only way you can tell, other than your fish becoming ill, is by testing your water to see if you've disrupted your nitrogen cycle and it's the foundation of your tank everything in your tank including the bacteria that live in your tank are dependent on that nitrogen cycle functioning properly so one of the things that always pops into my head I don't know why but it seems to be whenever I think of like something people waste money on in the aquarium hobby I always rush right to scrapers and I don't know why I just see a lot of different types of scrapers out there that claim to do this and claim to do that and everyone seems to claim to be the best scraper you'll ever buy and the last scraper you'll ever need and I'm just I'm kind of always a little puzzled by that too it's a scraper it does the exact same thing that an old credit card will do. <laughs> um, it does the exact same thing that a razor blade will do. And the money I see people going out and spending to go buy the new fangled gadgety scraper that's going to claim to somehow scrape your glass better than a simple credit card will scrape your glass. You know, take, take the $25 you were going to spend on that scraper. Use your old credit card until, you know, for a little while, and then take that money and use it to go buy yourself one of those master test kits if you don't have one already. That's where you should be spending your money uh, if you don't already have this test equipment. If you don't have a general hardness test kit and a carbonate hardness test kit, the next time you're tempted to go buy the newest doodad that's supposed to do whatever in your tank, Maybe put that on hold for a little while, maybe a week or two, till you can save a few dollars again, and take that 15 or $20 and buy yourself a carbonate hardness or a general hardness test kit, and then that way you can actually do something that's really going to be to your benefit. It will help you maintain your tanks better. It will help you learn more about what you're doing with your aquarium, which will just make the hobby better for you all the way around. The more you know and the more information you have and the better your understanding of what's going on in your tank is just going to make everything better for everybody, especially your fish. So that is my little bit of my school marm lecturing at you to go out and get yourself some test equipment. But it's really inexpensive, everybody. It's really easy to do. You don't need any kind of scientific background to follow the simple instructions on the test kit. And it's really, really important that you be able to check your water for the health of your fish. So thanks for watching. If you're not already subscribed, please do so. Uh, I shoot a lot of different videos of a lot of different topics. There's another little tiny glimpse of my black ghost uh, picking up one of those shrimp pellets. So if you're not already subscribed, please do so. Thank you for watching this one. I hope you enjoyed. Hope you got the point that you really should go out and buy yourself a test kit if you don't have one. All right, last time I'm saying that. Thanks again for watching. See you real soon on the next one.